Today we're, we're diving right into a controversial topic. It's critical race theory. And I, I'd like to start this discussion with this question, and Ray, I'd like to get your, your thoughts on this. What is critical race theory and why is it debated today? Critical race theory is actually one uh, part of a family of what's been called critical theories or grievance studies, where you divide um, people into groups and you have the oppressed and you have the oppressors and whatever group you're assigned to, and it's not ever based on character or actions or words or things by which the Bible would have us to be judged by the law of God, whether we obeyed, whether we disobeyed, it has nothing to do with that. It's what group are you part of? So in critical race theory, the white group, at least in, in West, in America, is considered to be the oppressor group. And so if you're white, you're part of the oppressor group, and you can never leave that group. You're always an oppressor. Uh, a, a white family in Appalachia with dirt floors almost starving you know, every winter, uh, they are oppressors. And, and a family like you know, Colin Powell um, grew up in, uh, in wealth and went to Ivy League schools and, and had great jobs all of his life. He's the oppressed and always the oppressed. And, and that's the way critical studies looks at it. It, it, it puts us into this, this relationship of power. All human relationships are about power and the oppressors always act to defend their power and the oppressed are always uh, subjected to their power. Well, th that kind of opens up, that's a great definition, Ray. I want to open it up for other thoughts and other definitions, but also why it's debated today. Well, you know, I think one of the reasons why it's debated today is because you have people on both sides of the spectrum. Uh, you know, I was uh, sharing earlier that uh, we, uh, there was a guy coming in to Pittsburgh and he was going to be talking about critical race theory. And uh, I announced it to my church and there was a great deal of interest, but it was funny because uh, some people were interested in hearing him say one thing and another, another group was interested in hear, hearing him. So they were both looking for support for their position. And I think that, you know, there's just so, so many strong feelings on both sides that that's caused a, a rise in tension and that's caused, you know, what, what it means to uh, uh, have this great debate. So, you know, again, I, I'm just seeing it, you know, even in my church that, you know, we're almost split down the middle on which side they fall on as far as critical race theory. So I know I, I kind of know maybe the position that Carl Ellis was going to come from. So I think that some of the people that would have went, you know, would have went to see him probably would have been disappointed in what what they heard. I also think it's really debated because it's just the day and hour that we're in. You know, uh, I'm going to go a little bit further down the spectrum and kind of take it a little bit of a side route. I believe that it's a separation of wheat and tear time, just in general. Right before there's a great harvest, which if you believe in the rapture, which I do, um, there, you have to go to the threshing floor. The threshing floor is where everything was shook up to separate everything. Everything is polarized in this season. Uh, whether it's critical race theory, whether it's Republican and Democrat, whether it's vaccinated, not vaccinated. I mean, you name everything is polarized. And everybody's about either, either if you're on one side, you're right. And if you're on another side, you're wrong or vice versa, depending on what side you're on. So I think it's just the day and hour that we're living, which is why we need to have absolute truth uh, in the world yeah. today. It's so important because everybody's got their own theories in regards to that. So that's just another little twist that I wanted to put on, but I'll hand it over to Mark. Well, I gotta, wait a minute, before you go, Mark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> who's the wheat, who's the tares <laughs> on this? No, 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 I, when I say that, not in regards yeah. to critical race theory, yeah. I believe just that's the day and hour of, before Christ's return, mm -hmm. he's separating those, there's a shaking that's happening. So everything is polarized. Everything, okay. even if yeah. you want McDonald's or Burger King, somebody's gonna be wrong. You know what I mean? So it's not necessarily that it is right or wrong. Chick -fil -A. Chick -fil -A. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry, maybe I need to clarify that. Not necessarily that critical race, like somebody's wheat, somebody's tear. It's just as a whole in society, if you think about it, everything is so controversial. Yes, very And much uh, so. that's just yeah. where we are in this day and hour. Yeah, yeah, Mark. Well, obviously we've had some race challenges in our history. My concern with critical race theory is that they play down uh, the, the, and really don't bring racial reconciliation, they bring division and separation. And to me, the cross of Christ unites and brings us together. And that's my primary concern with what I see. It's not pulling the nation together, it's bringing great division and confusion in our ranks. You know, yeah. and, and if I could add another component to it, you know, uh, it also says that racism is embedded in our government, 
in our law, in our culture. And so that's why there's this big change to try to address you know, systemic change. You know, that's why they talk about systemic racism because they, they, you know, they believe that it's embedded and that the only way you're gonna get it out is to, you know, root it out through, you know, the mass, dealing with the mass issues and changing policies. You know, that's that, the whole thing about defunding the police. You know, that was all about, you know, changing the, the, the system. And, and, you know, so there was this association to make it seem like police were racist. And so, you know, if you have a racist uh, police uh, force, then that's embedded in, you know, in law enforcement. And so, you know, we can't just go change one officer. You know, we got to go change the whole system. Well, that brings a, a big question to this. Is critical race theory part of uh, what might be a, a kind of an anarchistic view of we have to tear it all down in order to build it back up? Does anybody have a thought on that? Yeah, I think absolutely. I would completely agree with Dr. Glaze. Um, Again, because it's this, because uh, it's not character, it's not actions, it's not words, but it's in group. It's in oppressor oppressed. Everything that our nation is, everything that our nation uh, has, all of its institutions, including the church, because it was founded in large part by white Protestant males, it's all inherently by critical uh, race theorists. It's all inherently racist because white Protestant males can only act in support of their power. That's, even if we try not to, even if I go and, you know, rescue, a, I don't know, a family of uh, poor people who, you know, have animals that they love and I'm just do all this altruistic good, even in my altruistic good, I'm still acting to oppress because I can't help it because that's who I am. And so all the structures have to come down, the government, the schools, the churches, it all has to come completely down because it's, it's inherently racist. That's their view. Right, and, and they would also say that Christianity is a part of the problem. That's it's right, you know, Western and, right. white. Right, yeah, because you, I, and, you know, I'm glad you said that. I, I didn't have to say it, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. white male, you yeah, know, heterosexual. Yeah. The pictures uh, of Jesus. Yeah, that's the theory, though. That's yeah. not our stance. Oh, right. That's what yeah. critical theory yeah. teaches. But that's what they say. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, so, let's, let's, let's kind of uh, open it up a little further. Does critical race theory, Jay, I'm going to ask you about this. Does all critical race theory say that all white people are racist? Which is amazing that they would even say that because, to your point, we're putting people in groups and then putting a label on them, which is what happened to black people. Basically, black people were considered animals. They were considered, they, 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 were, they didn't have any ability to be educated. They didn't have feel natural human emotions and feelings. And, and so because they were black, they were this specific group. And as a result, there was no redemption. There was nothing. And that's what critical race theory teaches, that you're white, you're in that group, you're, you're the oppressor. Yep and you'll never be able to be free from that. So the best thing you can do is just simply do whatever you can to help black people any way you can to, come, to show that you're not anti or, or that you're not racist and go from there, which let me say this, and I wanna say this to everybody that's out there. There are many people, I've had so many pastor friends of mine come to me and say, and, and they have to apologize to me, which I think is just ludicrous. You do not need to apologize to me about what happened in the 1800s. You're forgiven, even if you did do it. And those people back then, we need to let people off the hook for what they have done. You know, and the reality is I've had so many people come up to me and they'll say, oh, you know, I'm so sorry. You know, I apologize. And I, that's like, Ray, if you came to me, I'm like, yeah. you ain't got to apologize yeah, to yeah. me for <laughs> what happened 200 years ago. Yeah. I was like, but and I, I, I'm going to leave it alone because I'm going to get on a soapbox <laughs> and I need all these people need to talk. So, yeah, you know, but I, yes. I, I wanted to, because Vody Bauckham said something and he was actually quoting the line from a movie. But he said, if you're white, you know, and you're dealing with this uh, critical race theory. He said, you cannot win, you cannot get even, and you can't get out of the game. Right. So, <laughs> <you know. laughs> That's what critical race theory teaches. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, basically, you're, you're stuck, you know, and, you know, you got to deal with it. But yet and still, you know, you're always going to be the blame. And, and you know, I, I know that that's one thing about the gospel. Amen. You know, like when you Amen. present the gospel and people get saved, then a life is changed. But when you address systems like critical race, you know, what they're doing, you have to constantly address the system, you know, cause it, and, and make sure that you're keeping up with the change. And that's the power of the gospel, that the gospel yeah. deals with the individual. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I don't have to view you as a white person as being racist. You know, I think that there are racist white people. Now, I don't want to, you know, I, I just don't yeah, want to sweep that under the rug. We're yeah. not saying that racism does not exist. Right, yes. right, 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 Certainly right, right. there's sure. racism that exists and there's problems that have to be dealt with. It's just how we're approaching that.